Hello. As you can see, I am filming from a different place. I am filming from my parents' house here in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm practicing social distancing or what I like to call physical distancing because I'm still socializing with people thanks to technology. So for Women's History Month today, I learned a lot about an Erie legend, Gertrude Barber. She started the Barber National Institute. She helped people of all ages find out that they are a person first and foremost. People with disabilities are people first and foremost. So let's find out about Gertrude Barber who started the Barber Nat National Institute here in Erie, Pennsylvania. She is an Erie icon. She is a female leader. She started something quite, quite magical here in the Erie community. And I sat down with her niece, Maureen, to learn about her legacy. So I knew Dr. Barber and I, 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 I refer to her, all of us in the family refer to her as Aunt Tootie. So, so I knew um, Aunt Tootie from the very beginning. She was, a, first and foremost, she was a teacher. Um, she began her career as a teacher um, and moved up the ranks, became a school psychologist, continued her education, became a, doc a doctorate in education, and as she moved up the ranks of the Erie School District and becoming the psychologist, it was her responsibility to meet with parents, to test their child, and to determine whether or not they would be eligible to go to school. And at that time, going back to you know the 40s and the early 50s, children with special needs were not eligible to go to school because it was thought that they were uneducable. Um, how horrible that seems to us today, but that was the standard of education in the early 50s. So in 1952, she and a group of parents decided they wanted so much more for their children. They wanted an education. They didn't want the child to have to stay home. Parents did not want to send the child to an institution. She didn't want either of those things either. So they started their first classroom for children, and the children ranged in age from five years of age to 18. The children had all different kinds of disabilities, but the children were able to come to school. Um, she found some teachers who were retired teachers from the Erie School District, and since she knew them, she went to them and said, would you be willing to teach a group of children with special needs? They found some free space. They didn't have to pay rent. And so the parents for that first group brought the children to a room and there was a teacher and that's how the Barber National Institute began. I mentioned earlier that Dr. Barber was getting very involved on a national basis. Um, the president of the United States, John Kennedy, um, formed a task force on mental retardation. And Dr. Barber was a person, was one of the leaders in the country that was invited to serve on this task force to really begin the planning, the act of planning in 1960 for what should we be doing as a, not only as a community, but as a nation to support children and adults with disabilities. So again, we continue to expand over the years. Um, and it was the year 2000 that um, we had our second capital fund drive to build a new school, uh, as well as a new training facility. And that dream of hers um, wasn't small. She wanted to raise $7 million in our Erie community to be able to do that. So there were some naysayers who said, Gertrude, no one except the universities have raised $7 million in our community. What makes you think you can? And she said, I have dreams. I have dreams for my children and my adults. And she raised $7 million. So we're sitting in a new school, we have a new training site, and her dreams continue today. Dr. Barber died in 2000. She was a female leader and her legacy continues today. Emma Rose Lewis, YourEerie.com.